Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear respected elders, brothers, sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. As always, we begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى who is our Creator, Sustainer, Nourisher, Protector, and Curer. And we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, the whole purpose behind us having this series with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to take home a heart softener every single night for all of us inshallah ta'ala a heart softener that would soften our hearts because most of us including myself our hearts are riddled with diseases and when i say diseases i don't mean cardiovascular diseases but on the other hand spiritual diseases diseases like hatred diseases like envy jealousy malice pride allahu akbar at times because of the education that we have acquired we become so proud forgetting our hearts forget that it was allah the almighty who taught us that education at times we are in a seat of power our hearts forget that it was allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who put us on that seat of power and at times we are in the lap of luxury we have so much of wealth our hearts forget that it was Allah the Almighty who gave us that wealth. So because of all of, the, all of those diseases of that nature, our hearts be, be, begin to harden. Our hearts start to become so hard that at times when we want to try and ponder on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find it difficult to do so. We want to weep and cry in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because our hearts have hardened, tears no longer flow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all soften our hearts. So inshallah ta'ala, for today's heart softener, we will be touching on love. Love is an extremely powerful emotion. It is an extremely powerful feeling which has been ingrained into our hearts. Wherever you look around, you see love manifesting itself between a father and his child, between parents and their children, between the children towards their parents, between spouses husband towards his wife and a wife towards her husband we see even human beings to animals love manifests itself in so many ways but inshallah ta'ala we will be touching on the most purest form of love love at the pinnacle of its purity and that is loving our maker the love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving the source of love or the creator of love allahu akbar and that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the pinnacle of purity love arabs in general they translate the word hub love to mean as a sofa which means purity and when we talk about purity, that is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And please remember salawat whenever I mention his beautiful name. Love has divided itself into so many categories. But when we come from the top 
love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love towards his messengers alayhi salatu wa salam, love towards the scholars, love towards the sahaba, ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in, love towards the a'imma rahimahumullahu rahmatan wasi'a. All these types of love indoctrinate itself in that one particular term, al-hub. So love at the pinnacle of its purity is to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he mentions that there are three ayat in the Noble Quran that go hand in hand. In other words, without one, the other cannot exist. Ayah number one, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. If you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot say that I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I obey, but I disobey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because that won't work. Nor can you say I obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but then I'm going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes hand in hand. Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. The next two ayat is to establish salah and give out zakah. A person cannot only establish salah and not give out zakah. And the final ayah is that you be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise you be grateful unto your parents. These are the three ayat. And let's look at a few teachings of my beloved Shaykh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, who is also known as the specialist of the hearts. Because he talks a lot. There, he has written extensive researches on a person's heart and how to cure the diseases, the spiritual diseases of our hearts. He says, إِذَا غُرِسَتْ شَجَرَةُ الْمَحَبَّةِ فِي الْقَلْبِ That if an individual or if the tree of love is planted in an individual's heart, Allahu Akbar, Eloquent, beautiful words. إِذَا غُرِسَتْ شَجَرَةُ الْمَحَبَّةِ فِي الْقَلْبِ If the tree of love is planted in an individual's heart, i.e. the tree of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if that tree is planted in an individual's heart, وَسُقِيَتْ بِمَاءِ الْإِخْلَاصِ وَمُتَابَعَةِ الْحَبِيبِ And if that beautiful tree is watered with the pure waters of ikhlas, sincerity, and the waters of following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two main factors that are missing in today's society. Ikhlas, number one, sincerity is completely gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our deeds with ikhlas. Because many of us, including myself, we do everything for name and fame, for the publicity. We give out charity to become known as a philanthropist. But on the other hand, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said along the lines of these words that when you give out sadaqah, what your right hand gives out, your left hand should not know about it. You should keep it top secret. But today we plaster it around so that the whole world knows about our charity. Because why? We want to be known as a very charitable person. Allahu Akbar. And then the second important factor, following the lifestyle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many of us, including myself, we suffer complexes to look like our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our beloved master who cried, Ummati, Ummati, who cried out for us, we feel ashamed to adopt his life as our lives. Allahu Akbar. We feel ashamed to follow him. We feel ashamed to place him as our role models. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if that tree of love is watered with the pure waters of ikhlas and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that tree, asluha thabitun fi qarar al-qalb, that tree will be firmly grounded. The roots of that tree will be firmly grounded in that individual's heart and 
وفرعها متصل بصدرة المنتهى الله أكبر The branches of that tree would grow far and wide so much to the extent as if it would reach صدرة المنتهى the utmost boundary where even Jibreel عليه الصلاة والسلام could not cross when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up on Mi'raj. This is the beauty of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for his beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the minute we set ablaze our hearts with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, automatically our hearts will purge out all of those evil feelings, all of those evil things, all of those evil desires that are lurking in our hearts. Our hearts will purge out everything and our hearts will become supple and soft. Our hearts will easily grasp that which is good. Our hearts hearts will be able to ponder and reflect on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts will fall in sajda in front of Ar-Rahman, Allahu Akbar. I'm not saying that performing sajda in salah is not important, but just think, Many of us, we perform so many sajda throughout a single day. At times, our hearts are elsewhere. Our hearts are wandering. Our forehead is on the ground, but our hearts are elsewhere. Our hearts are perhaps taking account of our business. Our hearts are thinking of something else whilst we are in prayer. But in reality, our hearts need to be in sajda in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that heart will indeed be successful in this world as well as the hereafter because my dear respected elders brothers and sisters in Islam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said in an authentic hadith the narration goes along the lines of these words that in general what we think is fitna what we think is that fitna is generally presented to our limbs perhaps it's presented to our eyes to our ears but on the other hand Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that fitna Trials, calamities, tribulations are presented to the heart first, Allahu Akbar. It is presented to an individual's heart. And look at the parable Rasulullah gives us. It is presented like a straw mat. Like the mat you all of you all are seated upon. Like a straw mat. Look at how the straw has been woven one after the other. Fitna will be presented one after the other to an individual's heart. And if that heart accepts the fitna, that heart becomes dark like an overturned vessel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. But on the other hand, if that heart rejects that fitna, if that heart rejects that evil, that heart becomes like a polished mirror. Allahu Akbar. Because it is very, very important that we work on our hearts, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam. Let us use this month of Ramadan to fast with our hearts. Just as how we starve from daybreak till dusk, let us also let our hearts starve. Let us not give in to the evil desires that are lurking behind in our hearts. Let us purify our hearts. Let us ingrain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pure love. For the minute we do that, we will start enjoying, we will enter into a completely new dimension in our ibadah. The minute we open up the Quran, because our hearts are filled with love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will enjoy reading and reciting every single word. The minute we tie takbir in salah, we will enjoy salah until we give salam. It will be as if we are in the gardens of Jannah when we tie takbir for salah. Whatever good deed we do, if it is infused with the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will take us to new dimensions in our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. 
And may He the Almighty fill our hearts and set ablaze our hearts with pure love for Him and His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may He the Almighty accept our good deeds and may He help us to make the best out of this month of Ramadan as, as if it is our last month of Ramadan. And may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'waya anil Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allahu Khair. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate. And stay updated by joining our network's social links.